In 65, Adam Driver crash lands on prehistoric Earth and must protect a young girl from a planet full of dinosaurs. Going in, I think we just wanted a fun monster movie with this one, so let's see if it's worth checking out. Welcome everyone to the Atomic Cinema Experiment. I am Peter and joining me as always is Tara. Greetings citizens. This is a science fiction movie podcast. We get together, we talk about a sci-fi movie that we watched. It's really quite that simple. And on this episode, we've got a new release to talk about. Uh, the, the movie gods have blessed us with 65. A new science fiction film set 65 million years ago. And the time of the dinosaurs, where Adam Driver crash lands on Earth, and has to survive dinosaurs. <laughs> that's 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 the plot. <laughs> uh, and he's also got there's also a girl who survives that he can't talk to because she speaks a different language. And there's a sort of a surrogate father daughter thing going on. Uh, but that's the gist of it. We'll uh, keep it spoiler free to begin with, and we'll give you a warning before we go into spoilers. So we'll give our impressions and stuff, so you can judge uh if you want to go check it out while it's in theaters uh yourself and uh then we'll get into the the meat of it the juicy stuff so uh although on the trailer i didn't really know much about this 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 kind of snuck up on us i would say mm -hmm. uh but uh we'll get to, i suppose i'll just start with the question then tara what did you uh make of 65 well i was a little bit nervous going into it because the rotten tomato score was not very favorable <laughs> But I think Rotten Tomatoes is a little bit harsh. It's not a terrible film. I think it's perfectly fine. It kind of reminds me of The Good Dinosaur. And not because of the dinosaur, but because of the relationship between Adam Driver and Koa. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's kind of strange. Well, we, well, we were saying. It reminds me of The Good Dinosaur, <laughs> but not because of the dinosaurs. <laughs> In fact, if I have a complaint about the movie, it is the dinosaurs. Um, but, I mean... Uh, sometimes they're they're cool. Like it, it feels like a B movie that somehow got made into a a, a blockbuster, but like not a great one, <laughs> and um, not enough like good dinosaur stuff. But otherwise, you know, it's not it's not a bad movie. Do you disagree? It reminds me of Jurassic Park, but not because of the dinosaurs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just uh, I'm I'm Josh. Uh, I like I don't think it's good. I don't think it's terrible. I think it's annoyingly, for conversation's sake, it's just kind of this bland, sort of just under the average t movie. Like, it's not egregiously, like, doing anything super wrong. It's just not doing anything that interesting with a lot of cliched story ideas. Like, nothing in this movie feels inspired. Uh, you know, if, it, it's doing it no favours that it's coming out while Last of Us is airing, because... It's hard not to think of a uh, you know the strong surrogate father daughter relationship in that, and then this is like so much more simple and like it has none of the layers that that does. Don't you think that this movie is kind of inspired by The Last of Us? I mean, it is a Sony film after all. As that well, that was the first sign that something was wrong. Is that I saw the Sony logo at the start. Um, <laughs> One of the first movies we ever did that was like a new release uh, was a Sony movie. We did Bloodshot early on in the show mm -hmm. uh this is a bit better than bloodshot i'll get i'll give it that <laughs> i actually think well the acting's a lot better the, the, the little girl i think is actually quite a good actress and i i already know that adam driver's a good actor so going into that at least we had that you know to watch so the little girls people who know what they're doing <laughs> yeah the, the little girl's better than vin diesel okay i see what Definitely. you're saying <laughs> okay. uh, i did get a trailer for fast x when i went to see this me too um I don't know what's going on in those movies, so uh, mm. it meant nothing to me. I, I, he said <laughs> family. Really their last ride? He said family or... a lot. That's all I know. Uh, yeah. Family, family, family. Jason Momoa is there. The Rock's not there, but John Cena is. You can just swap wrestlers around and just pretend yeah. nothing's happened. It's fine. Statham's still there, too. But I, For some reason, I thought Hobbs and Shaw were going to do their own thing and then wouldn't be allowed back yeah. into the to the family what's so weird is i got that and then right after i got a trailer for the dungeons and dragons movie that also stars michelle rodriguez and i'm like michelle rodriguez yeah, that looks good. Is, no it doesn't it looks it's the most 2003 looking fluff i know that I've ever i seen. think it looks good 
Mm. Sometimes I like a 2003 flip. <laughs> That's not a sentence I was expecting to hear today. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, I like... Obviously, when I first saw the, the Rotten Tomatoes score for this, it was like 25%. It went up a bit. I think it's like 33% now. But that does paint a, oh, God, this is going to be a train wreck. I almost wish it was, though, because it'd be more interesting to talk about. I, th- I think it's, it's kind of in that annoying, bland middle territory where it's not the, you know, it's like fundamentally the ideas are fine and what, mm-hmm. what it's trying to do is fine. But you can tell, I mean, the movie's only 90 minutes long. I think you can tell that it's been probably cut down quite a bit based on like studio notes like hey this needs to be tighter this needs to be you know less i don't know dramatic and artsy or whatever the whatever the original cut might have been like it feels like it's been pared down to the basics upon basics and everything it's doing feels uh just very derivative it feels very you know it's like we've got dinosaur scenes obviously it's hard not to compare it to scenes in Jurassic Park or Jurassic Park sequels because that's the main example we have of dinosaur movies and it's like so much worse at doing dinosaur stuff you know like that's that's one problem I think it feels like it's got dumbed down somewhere for people uh like I laughed out loud at the title screen because it didn't just say 65 it then sort of made it clear that we knew this was going to be set on earth and I actually couldn't fathom why it was like why not have that be a surprise? Like, you know, you, the movie, like, sets up right at the start that Adam Driver's character uh, and his ship that he's on comes from some other planet somewhere else. You know, it's kind of like Star Wars. A long time ago in a galaxy far away, there was another human being planet, and he eventually crash lands on Earth. Um, and all I could think was, why not let that be a surprise when we realize when he's there with dinosaurs... And then we, re- you know, like, why, why not have us realize that? that? That would actually be a fun little subversion. Because like, we would just assume he's from Earth. We'd assume this is the future, I think, right? Well, I mean, that's what the trailer did, right? The trailer just kind of caught you off guard. Like, it, it's the, the the trailer, which I think didn't premiere at the Super Bowl, which was only last month, was like, oh, yeah, here's a new Adam Driver movie. Maybe a little bit before I think it was Adam before Driver. that. I feel like it was maybe like January or maybe even a bit earlier. Maybe the Super Bowl just had like a, a new trailer or something yeah. then. But the, the first trailer for it was like, here's Adam Driver's new movie, new sci-fi movie where he's exploring a planet. And then like only at the end do you see, oh, it's a dinosaur and it's called 65. You don't have to like have 65 oh, yeah. million uh, years like, ago on Earth. Like, and we all got it, you know? <laughs> I'm like, oh, what a surprise. I actually thought he time traveled though from the trailer. I, th- I thought there was like... You know, kind of like well, pla- yeah, he's clearly a human. Yeah, so. I-, I thought it was kind of like Planet of the Apes, but in reverse, where he went back 65 million years. So this was like, yeah. or yeah, maybe he is from the future because we've got spaceships and shit, but he goes back in time. But no, there's, the start of the movie makes it very clear. No, this is just like civilization in a different place that's going to end up interacting well, even with Earth. The, I did see another trailer when I went to the movies before, like a month ago or so, and it, it, it's, it, it establishes that he is a visitor to Earth in that trailer okay see i think that's a mistake i think you keep that under wraps and you you know because maybe you do think it's because there's one other big element which i'm not spoiling here i'm going to keep it till spoilers that makes it abundantly obvious that it's earth right and i think if you sort of let that be the confirmation that that's where exactly we are uh or how we figure it out i think that would have been a bit more interesting than just like stating it outright to us you know, mm-hmm. I, I think there's just, there's a lot of it that feels very kind of, like it's, not maybe not necessarily speaking down to the audience with how it portrays the, the story between the two characters and, like, but it somehow manages to be quite dull at times, and there's just, there's little things in the direction. Like, honestly, if you had the exact same script, but you had just a much, much better director directing it, it would mm-hmm. probably be at least an entertaining me movie. You definitely need someone who gets tension a little bit better. Yeah, like there's just those little things like uh, there's this so there's one scene where like a uh, a smallish dinosaur when I say I'm th- I think the size of a big dog right a smallish dinosaur attacks Adam Driver and he's able to hit it or whatever to to kill it right and we've not really had an up close look at a dinosaur properly yet and the the shot of the dinosaurs that's lying there is oddly kind of like just off a little bit and not showing the dinosaur's head. And I thought that was a really weird choice. Why are you ha- like? He's already been attacked by it. Why? Why are we treating this like it's going to be a surprise that there's dinosaurs still? 
Like, that's clearly what it is. And mm -hmm. I wasn't sure what the decision was to frame it so weirdly it was, like that. Well, it was trying to show you, it was trying to get you to look at the, the foot of the dinosaur so you can recognize what it is. You could do that with the head still on the front. It just it looked off to me. It, looked, it felt like it was trying to hide something. I actually thought that that was kind of, was showed a bit of promise because, um, can I just say what the dinosaur is? Sure. I don't know if it's a spoiler. <laughs> well, it's a velociraptor. And if you're wondering, like, why are they so small? Velociraptors are that small. It's just in Jurassic Park, they made them big to be intimidating. <laughs> but so when it pans down, to, so he gets attacked by this little dinosaur and, you know, or a dinosaur the size of like a medium sized dog. And you just see the claw, the raptor claw at the bottom. And you're like, oh, okay, so this movie is doing raptors more accurate than Jurassic Park. So that's what it made me think anyway. It's like, oh, we're going to give you the actual size of our velociraptor and we're not going to sensationalize it or make it seem like it's a big, like a bigger threat than it actually is. Cause it's already a big threat. I never realized it was made by a velociraptor, if I'm honest. I was too busy thinking, why can't I see his head? It was annoying. <laughs> you didn't look at the, you didn't look at the feet. Cause it was showing the feet for a long time. I don't, I don't know why that's specific to a velociraptor though. Don't a lot of dinosaurs have feet like that? The, the claw? The, yeah. That's, that's a raptor thing. Velociraptor thing. Oh. I mean, there are, I think the Dionysus or something, which is more based on yeah. what the, I mean, that's what the ones in Jurassic Park are, but the... Um, I don't know every the, species of dinosaur. I, I don't know any of the species of dinosaur that are in this movie. I thought you were a Jurassic Park fan when you were a kid. I am, but they look different in this, so I just assume they're different species. Well, yeah, they, Spielberg didn't like the name, liked the name Velociraptor, but didn't like that it was small. So swapped it out with the Dionysus, but called it Velociraptor, even though it's, it's not the same dinosaur. Yeah, well, I wasn't thinking about that at all. I was just thinking the shot was framed weirdly. Uh, and I think that was the point of it. I think the point of it was to show you that, look, we're giving you raptors, but, but they're going to not be like the ones you remember. Yeah, but you part. say that, but this is the first time we see a dinosaur up close, so it's really weird that it's, like, hiding, like, the, the main part of it. Like, it, it, it it's, like, I don't want to say blue-balling you, but it, it's just kind of weird. It's, like, it's like... They there do see that a lot throughout the film, though, uh, for sure. And it is an ongoing problem. I, I think it, like... There's never a chance to really enjoy the spectacle of them. There's never a sense of wilderment. Uh, don't get me wrong, I do appreciate the Adam Driver refers to them as aliens, because why would he call them dinosaurs? He doesn't know they're dinosaurs. They're just alien yeah. monsters to him. But I just, yeah, like, I don't think any of these moments with the dinosaurs, by and large, were that uh, exciting. Like, it's actually kind of shocking how dull the dinosaur scenes are, because they're dinosaurs. <laughs> You know what I kept thinking about the film? Uh -huh. I kept thinking, why are the dinosaurs acting like ghosts? I think they're just trying to like be like ghosts in the background. Like, ooh, he's going to haunt you later. Or like jump scares. <laughs> they keep like taunting him, but not like a way an animal would, it, like a way a poltergeist would in a, in a movie, in a horror movie. Yeah, like a horror stalker. Also, they never run into any, like, you know, herbivores. <laughs> no, no. This, everything in this is dangerous years ago it's a good thing it got wiped out because like <laughs> the dinosaurs were just all carnivorous at that point <laughs> they're all bastards they're all horrible bastards <laughs> well uh, there is one technically that you see and it's like a baby one that's a nerd before okay okay sure technically but like you know it's never just like stumble past a stegosaurus or <laughs> you know anything like that no and in fact like some of the dinosaurs i didn't even recognize no, which I'm fine with that. I'm fine with them having more variety, not just doing a T-Rex and a Velociraptor and the, the, yeah, the obvious all the ones that you know. Yeah, the obvious ones from Jurassic Park. I get avoiding them. That's fine. Like I, I totally can appreciate that. I just, I, I just don't think the direction was up to like actually doing anything cool with them or yeah, actually. Uh, I think they tried a little bit, but it just didn't work. We're not giving points for effort here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I also thought during the movie, like, man, this would make a great video game. <laughs> like, I, I would rather play this level than watch it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, going through an alien world, you get to, like, the different areas. Like, one, set, one area is, like, a, like, a, uh, like acid lakes and stuff like that. And then you get through the jungle or a foresty area. I thought that was, like, it, it was almost like watching someone play a video game, but it wasn't as exciting. I think it would make a good game. I don't know if you're just saying that though, because his like laser rifle thing looks very like video gamey. 
Well, even the the his backpack looks like a uh, dead space or something, mm. you know, <laughs> like something Isaac would wear. <laughs> yeah, I guess I can kind of see that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I just I think it's really dull. It's a really dull movie. That's not. It's never really that exciting. And on paper, I understand what it's trying to do with the relationship between the two characters, but it just. <sighs> It, it always feels like it's doing the most direct, like, most uh, saccharine, like, approach to it, right? There's never any kind of, like... <sighs> See, I don't want to just compare it to The Last of Us because it feels like a cheap thing to do, but it's hard to not think about it because it's, like, the, the main father-daughter surrogate relationship that I, I can think well, of right now. Well, I honestly now. think that is, it's truly just inspired by that. Well, it, it, it's sure. doing a terrible job of, of living up to it, that if it is inspired by it. <laughs> Well, whatever, dude. I mean, it's clearly, like, inspired by it. <laughs> How is it cool? Last of Us is not the first ever surrogate father-daughter, like, story. No, I think it's just the, the whole video game thing, instead of, like, the post-apocalyptic world, it's, it's like, oh, we have to help her, I gotta keep her alive. There's other daughter stuff going on. There's, like, uh, there's just so much of it that is familiar from The Last of Us. And it's Sony property, so I just gotta feel like maybe this was a script like what if we did the last of us but there was a mod that made it <laughs> dinosaurs instead of infected i mean i don't think the fact that it's a sony movie has end like because if anything that makes me less think less lately that it's inspired by last of us because sony would not want to like do the cheap knockoff of their own thing you don't you don't think that they have like you can't sue them for making a story so similar no you kidding me there's way closer, so. like, rip-offs than this to other things that don't get sued. sued. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, it's just the thing they wouldn't have to worry about. <laughs> I don't think I agree with this logic. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You know, like, so I, I know, like, makeup brands and cosmetic brands, and there's Estee Lauder who owns, like, everything, right? And when I was really into makeup, like, 10 years ago... There are these new formulas coming out from MAC or from Clinique, all under the umbrella of Estee Lauder, which also has their own line. So what would inevitably happen is like all these younger, cooler brands would come out with like the new gelée formula uh, exclusive to MAC. And then all of a sudden Estee Lauder would also have its own version of it, you know? And so with Clinique, because everybody, like if something is successful in one of the brands, because it's all owned by this, Umbrella Corporation, not the one you like, but you know what I mean, <laughs> of Estee Lauder, they would just appear all over the place, the same kind of product, you know, and it wouldn't be ex exclusive to one brand anymore. It would be a, a, a knockoff version of it. But it wouldn't be a big deal because it's all owned by Estee Lauder. Yeah, but the rivals could also have their version of it, as long as, long as it's legally distinct. I don't know. That doesn't happen as much as you think. Well, regardless, you, you've, you've drifted me away from the point I was actually going to make <laughs> about compared to The Last of Us, which is, in The Last of Us, Joel and Ellie's relationship is interesting. One, they've got personalities, which is something that Adam Driver in this movie does not really have. <laughs> um, he is defined entirely by his basic story, like, backstory, right? And that's it. But... In The Last of Us, Ellie and Joel, yes, they have this surrogate father thing where this, this father, you know, he's away from, or, you know, he's, he's lost his daughter in the backstory and he's struggling with the idea that he maybe he has to take care of this girl and maybe he's reluctant because he doesn't want to be attached to anyone again, blah, 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 blah. But what's, what makes The Last of Us interesting with the layers to it is that it reveals lots of, like, negative things associated with those feelings as well. You know, Joel we find out as we go through the story that he's a pretty you know he's done some bad things and some of those bad things are because of like this connection that you form with someone else right and all, there's it's saying a lot of things about love and about how people love and about what love can like make you fear and cause you to do um watching this movie and like the bonding of, of him and the, the girl is very much just reluctant saccharine sweet thing Oh, and then maybe we'll hug. <laughs> like it's very much stripped down to the 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 the, the most basics. It, you know, it's not really saying anything about any of this. You know, it's it's just kind of there so the characters got a story. And what feels like it should be just a fun B movie, but it forgot to have the fun. Like 
the what the movie I'd compare this to most because I think it'd be fairer to is not Jurassic Park because Jurassic Park is obviously a spectacle thing that redefined like what a spectacle could be could be and it's this pr- you know prominent film. I think compared to Jurassic Park Z is a lot more fair because that's just the, the silly B movie that's just a bit of fun, right? It's not yeah probably anywhere near as good as the first one. But Jurassic Park is a way better movie than this. The dinosaur scenes are all way more memorable. It's silly, of course, but it's silly in a fun way. And I don't think anything in this is silly. That this film, the probably the biggest critique I would give it, uh, aside from maybe the direction, just not maybe handling the dinosaurs and stuff like that that well, is that it's got no personality. This movie doesn't have an ounce of personality. Mm-hmm. It is humorless. Well, not entirely true. There's a little bit of jokey between them here or there but you know it's it's, it's not it's, there's just there's, no, there's nothing it's it's a, there's no there's no charisma to it actually i actually thought the character adam driver's character was kind of stupid in a couple of points of the film where like i was mm. coming up with solutions before he was thinking of them and it's not like he's got a lot of stuff on him you know like <laughs> he has very limited supplies and resources and i was still like why don't you use those or why don't you use that thing <laughs> and um there was also a mistake I thought at the end, but I'll, I'll save it, obviously, until we get to that point. Oh, sure. Yeah, spoilers. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's one of these ones that's harder to talk about, I think, because fundamentally, it's, it's not something that's so dumb that I'm, I'm going to yell and be like, ah, why did no. they do these things? Why did they do that thing? It's just it's not... a medium movie. It's just not yeah. very good at anything it's doing. And a couple of rewrites just to tighten it up and maybe, like, give it a bit more weight would have been nice um because there's actually there's a few movies i'd compare this to obviously pick a dinosaur movie right jurassic park's the obvious one um yeah i've said last of us a bunch of times theodore rex for the obvious things not theodore rex shop uh and then the last the last uh, thing which i'll talk a bit more in spoilers why but i think the third movie i'd compare it to to the, the the concoction that makes this in the in the mixer the third movie is gravity and i'll 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 save till spoilers why i think gravity is in there but uh that's in there too and yeah, if you okay. blend those up now that you mention it uh you get 65 uh and it's a movie that no one will remember in two weeks time it'll be gone mm-hmm. from the ether and it'll be forgotten uh throwing in asylum pictures also in that blender asylum <laughs> that's a bit harsh <laughs> just a skosh you know like just a tablespoon <laughs> okay okay i'll i'll, I'll uh don't uh, you think the plot kind of sounds like an asylum film? Nah, that's not fair. Because asylum plots are all rip-offs of, like, movie types that we've had before properly. You're right. There might already be, like, a... I don't know. A, a, not 65, but, like, a 64 or something. <laughs> movie. You put a lot of thought into that joke, didn't you? I was trying to think, like, maybe I would do, like, the Cretaceous... Or that is Cretaceous, or Triassic or something. It would be further back, because 65 million years yeah. is the end of the dinosaurs, right? So it would be... That's the end of the Cretaceous, yeah. And that, but that's the last one, though, right? So you'd have to go back yeah. 70 or something. But they could still do that, like, instead of 65, call it Cretaceous End. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what's happening in this conversation that anymore. That would be the asylum version. That's the, uh, so, sure, no, the asylum version would be... St- no, 6 to 9 would be the porn version. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I almost went with that. That's why it took so long. I'm like, no, you can't do that. Hey, it would still be in the dinosaur time 6 to 9 million years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's get his spoilers then, because I have nothing left to say spoiler-free. Let's do it. Full spoilers for 65. You have been warned. The movie opens... By explaining to us with text that millions of years ago there were other civilizations far away, and we travel through this through the universe to a planet. I can't remember. It was like Sirius or something like that. Uh, and it's like here's here's a planet, and then we get a scene with Adam Driver with his wife and his daughter, and he's reluctant to leave. He's taking a job, doing an exploration mission, which he does frequently, by the sounds of it. But this is going to be a two-year mission, and he's guilty because their daughter's sick, and he doesn't want to be gone that long. But his wife is prodding him to go because it's tripling his salary, and this will pay for all of her medication. So we get... Did you think 
Did you think at this moment, like, man, there's a super advanced alien species out there and they also have capitalism and like Medicare that's held behind a paywall? <laughs> that's shitty. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you could, could critique it for this just being too much like Earth. Like, it's just the exact same. Yeah. You know? <laughs> They're a bit further ahead because they've got space travel and stuff, but other than that... Yeah, they didn't they didn't fix that in the future. <laughs> <laughs> not our future, but, you know... Yeah, it's not the future. future. It's, it's actually... It's, it's very much not the future. It's very much the past. <laughs> it's very much the past, yes. I, I also was thinking, like, oh, this is how humans got to Earth. And it's just like a. I was half you know, expecting dinosaurs had their chance, and now humans are going to populate or something. I was half expecting some sort of weird, crazy, like their Adam and Eve style ending yeah. to this. And, they never, and yeah, to be yeah. fair, they never did it. They never. I thought that from the trailer, but then like once I, I didn't know that there was a like little girl in the film until I actually was watching the movie, and then I'm like, oh, they can't do that. I can't, I can't really. It'd be they creepy. Like yeah. It, it, like, but otherwise, yeah, I thought like, oh, he crash lands here, and then like uh, maybe the rescue also crashes and now Cuban's going to have a society <laughs> starting after the dinosaurs are wiped out. Yeah, I I mean, basically what the the movie, the, the, the element I wasn't, I was trying to not spoil earlier, uh, even though it's kind of predictable because the obvious thing to do is that the whole movie's counting down to the asteroid hitting Earth. In fact, the reason why his ship crashes and lands on Earth is because it hits some of the little bits of the asteroid uh, on its way past. So... Yeah. So, I have a problem. With this. Okay, go on then. Be nerdy. I, I've got two problems with the end, and this one is that he's like, "Oh, we crashed into a smaller piece of the asteroid, and that was why our ship crashed." But I wanted him to crash into the asteroid belt, which launches the asteroid towards Earth. I wanted him to yore it up. I wanted him to be the cause of the end of the dinosaurs that reigned for like two hundred million years. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a scientific problem you had. You just wanted him to, like... I wanted his ship crashing into the asteroid belt to be the reason why that asteroid okay. was knocked into Earth's orbit. <laughs> or knocked into an orbit with a collision to Earth. That's what yeah. I wanted. As soon as his computer... But they didn't do that. As soon as his computer said we crashed into, like, an unidentified uh, asteroid, like or whatever i was like oh i get what's happening here this is the asteroid that's coming to hit i didn't pick that because i thought he actually did just go through the asteroid belt no no it was too it was too it's too much of an easy thing for them to do in this movie like it's not just i actually the, thought it was it's, that was like a clever thing though like when i saw the asteroid when you first see it in in the sky you're like oh okay this is what's gonna happen no as, as soon as they mentioned they crashed into like an asteroid i was like oh this is the, i i get what's happening here this is the asteroid that's on its way to Earth that he's he's crashed into. Um, so, but, but when you see it, it's like a uh, it's like a debris field. You know, it doesn't look like one asteroid. It, you act, you thought that it was the asteroid going to hit Earth the whole time, because I thought the asteroid belt, since there were so many bits and pieces of rock. Well, not in the opening scene, but as soon as his computer said, you know, when he asked what happened or whatever to the computer, and it says, "Oh, there was a unexpected asteroid." Uh, because it wasn't they didn't, they didn't say maybe they did say field but like it it did look like it was moving uh so I, I I yeah I was like okay the obvious thing to do is to have it be the asteroid that's going to kill Earth it's not just the he lands sixty five million years ago in dinosaur times it's the he lands right before it ends he's he's landed <laughs> days before the Earth is going to be annihilated by this See, thing. that's that's just so coincidental to me like it, that's why I really thought like. No, what he you, should be the what, cause Tara, of it. what are you talking about? That's so... It's a movie. Of course it's coincidental. That's right. Yeah, I know, but like, <laughs> why not make it his fault? Why not oh. your it up? <laughs> because no one, not a single writer in Hollywood has ever said the phrase, why not your it up? No one's ever <laughs> said that until you. Well, no, that's that's our thing. But like, <laughs> but why not, right? Like, why not your hunter from the future this and wipe out a civilization? Well, it's not really a civilization, it's just dinosaurs, but you know what I mean. Well, why not? To be fair, to be fair. Why not be the cause of it? Because that's awfully coincidental. <laughs> well, it's not. But in theory, the, the, the story has more dramatic weight because it is a coincidence and because it is this cataclysmic thing that the audience knows about because it's just part of our history, right? So mm -hmm. we understand the context of this. And because this whole movie is about him finding the will to live again, if he inadvertently caused this, 
I think it would muddy up that message. Um, I don't. Th- I don't think. Like, mm. I think what you're asking for is funny, but it's cheap. I think that the way the dinosaurs are depicted in this is that they deserve to be wiped out. I mean, they do. Yeah, the dinosaurs <laughs> in this are awful monsters, right? They're not animals. They're not just like because uh, they don't deserve to have this. Because even is what they're trying to say. So it would have he would have been in the clear for for destroying every all of them. Because even like tigers and lions and stuff. Yeah, they're carnivores and they'll they'll hunt and eat and stuff. And they're dangerous to be around because they could attack you. But a lot of the time, they're still just out like big cats. Like, they're, they're not always stalking. Yeah. They're not always being murderers. <laughs> yeah. I feel like dinosaurs are usually depicted like that, though. Yeah. Like, they're always... De- like, the co- big carnivores well, the- are just like, whatever's still moving, I have to attack. It's the same Even with... Even if uh... there's two giant meals in front of me right now. It's the Which s- happens in this movie. <laughs> it's the same with sharks in movies. Is that A shark is like a... It's like Michael Myers. Like, if you watch Jaws yeah. or you watch The Shallows or anything like that... The shark is like Michael Myers stalking the victim oh. until the ends of the earth. This movie also has a Jaws 4 moment. <laughs> it does? Or maybe it's a Jaws 2. Whichever one is the revenge. That's 4. Yeah. I, I thought of Jaws 4. Because there's like a dinosaur that wants revenge on Adam Driver. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought of Jaws. I would. I would have thought like ninety eight Godzilla for that because it's in the same movie. Well, why not? Th- what's wrong with me thinking about Jaws four? <laughs> because this, because I, I feel like that's a little bit different. Because that's like them just like tying into the like. Hey, this is connected to the first one because this is the sh- sh- this is like the the the, the sister shark <laughs> who wants revenge. <laughs> This, yeah. this at least wasn't as stupid because like the it's not a t-rex i thought there were t-rexes at first with a slightly different design but then i saw their arms and i was like no nah, they're not t-rexes they're more no something they're like else. bodybuilding t-rex <laughs> but they're as big as a t-rex and at least I think t- there was a, a newer dinosaur that was found that was bigger than t-rex and it had oh arms. fair enough right but at least here like this there's like two t-rex well not t-rex sorry it's two big carnivores i'll just call them and one of them witnesses the other one get killed by Adam Driver. So at least here it makes sense. They witness the act. They're like, I'm going to kill you, you mother effer. At least here, I don't think it's as stupid because he actually sees his wife be killed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's a visual thing. Because <laughs> the, the shark in Jaws, it's not like he heard, like, what did, what did he hear? Rumors from other fish? Hey! Do you, you're... They still don't, they don't act like animals, though, right? Like, there's literally chunks oh, that's of fair. fire coming out of the sky, and they're, or like things Ta- that Tara. make weird lights and noises, Ta- and they're like, what is that? Ta- Tara, Tara, Tara. Let me make it clear. I am saying it's less dumb than Jaws 4. I am not in any way saying that it's not dumb or, or in any way realistic. Okay? What's wrong with Jaws, Jaws 4? Oh, don't come on! Don't muddy this conversation up with all of a sudden pretending that Jaws Four is not shit. I mean, I don't think it's shit. Oh, it's such a boring movie. Maybe I just, maybe I should compare it to Jaws Four. It's it's, it's almost as boring. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, anyway, I, don't know. I just I wish the I wish the dinosaurs behaved more like like you know animals would. You know if they if there was something flashing lights and making loud noises i don't think that it would go investigate it i think its initial instinct would be to run away from the weird thing <laughs> how are we even on like just because i like i was trying to go through an order and i mentioned the asteroid and you just had to come in with your your asteroid complaint <laughs> and it yeah. somehow led to this it's led to <laughs> there's too much revenge in the carnivore <laughs> like jaws 4 <laughs> There is. There's two. They don't act like animals, and it's upsetting to me. That, that's 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 fine. That... Especially when it opens up with like, we're going to give you real looking velociraptors, not the fake ones, so you can at least expect like a little more grounded and realism in this version of our dinosaurs. Cool. That makes you different and unique from Jurassic Park. But now they don't act like animals, and I don't like that. I never forgot. I, I, there was never a single second where I felt we were going for realistic. I, I know you're saying that because you're like, oh, they're going for size accurate velociraptors. But the second Adam Driver lands and he walks out into the swamp, which, by the way, this was never paid off. But there's like a dinosaur swimming in the swamp. Uh, it never comes up later. You just see it a couple times while he's in this first scene. No, it sets up that there's like um, like tar pits that they can fall into it and drown. So it sets that up. Because that's what it's stuck in. 
What? Because remember they went, ugh, gross, because they no, had like, no, that's, no, 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 that's, 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 the, that's the one that's crying. That's way later. No, no, the swamp. It's right at the start of the movie when he comes out of the ship and he, he's, he's still in his space suit because he's, he's not even taking that off oh, yet. you mean like the... The thing that's swimming in the yeah, swamp? Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Swimming in the swamp. There's something swimming in the swamp. It's, and it's clearly uh, setting up something's going to grab him. You know, it's just like, uh, you know, in Star Wars, when they fall in the uh, the trash compactor thing, and they, they see the thing swimming. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, there's something in here, right? So I'm like, oh, something's going to attack him in like 10, 30 seconds or something in between. And yeah, no, never, nothing. Is that before the title came up? Yeah, because the title didn't come up until he saw a footprint. And, that, yeah, and that's like yeah. another five, 10 minutes after that. So I think that's what it's saying. So the idea is you go in blind and you don't know what you're watching. And then like you see the the thing in the water and you're like, I wonder what that alien thing is. Well, and then you see the dinosaur print and you go, whoa, that was a dinosaur. Well, that that would be a great idea if every single trailer hadn't like really sh- like shown us explicitly that this was full of dinosaurs. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so uh, I'm not so sure. But, like, how are you gonna get butts and seats, right, dinosaurs? <laughs> I'm not so sure how I, I buy that. Uh, may, that's the thing. Maybe the original cut of this, whatever it was, was supposed to try and obscure the fact that this was from another planet. That this because they could have easily, they could have easily like the CGI shot of like flying to this planet at the start and seeing that it looked different from Earth mm-hmm. and the name coming up. That could have all been something added in post. I mean, well, technically, it would have been added in post anyway because it's an effect shot. But you know what I mean? Like, this could have been something where the studio said, no, make it more obvious that he's from a different planet. You know what this could have been also? It could have been like, this is going to go straight to streaming because you, people won't know what it is. They'll just see an actor they like and they'll click on it without, you know, seeing any kind of trailer that shows that it's dinosaurs. And then, like, maybe word of mouth will get around. Because that would have been a, a good reveal. Yeah, yeah, okay. Even, even, even if like, but even in that scenario though, I would still think that the swimming, the thing swimming in the swamp right outside the ship, would still have to be paid off later. Like you know, much later in the movie, something yeah, happens. Maybe it was a cutscene or something. Yeah, yeah, maybe it was cut, but it's just it's weird that it's not paid off in any way. It's like set up and then it's just nothing. Uh, but yeah, so obviously the the ship like tears apart. He's like the only survivor. Uh, he you know, thinks all of the passengers who are on cryosleep are all dead as well. Obviously, there's one that's alive in a pod that comes up a little bit later, but he thinks they're all dead. And he's about to send a distress call. He's like, do 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 you know, we hit something, you know, I'm on this alien planet, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and he's about to say, send help. But then he deletes the message and then just sends a message saying that everyone's dead, no need to send any help. And then he goes outside and he takes his laser rifle and he puts it in his mouth or under his chin and he's going to kill himself. Um, now he, he backs out of it, but this was his plan. He decided to just say, don't bother coming. It's not worth just coming to save me. Uh, I'm going to kill myself. And through the course of the movie, we'll just talk about this now in one chunk because it's like too, too interspersed, but he's watching the rec- recordings of his daughter, right? That clearly were sent after he left, you know, cause the, the scene in the beach at the start was him building up the courage to tell her that he's leaving for two years. And all these clips were seen of him that he's watching uh you know minority report style is her sending messages while he's on his trip right because it seems like he was the only one who was awake i mean he was he was literally asleep but he wasn't asleep in a cryo bed he was asleep in a regular bed at the start of the movie because he's the pilot so he's the one you know he's he's up for a few months piloting the ship and then i assume he swaps with a second pilot or something at some point but he is watching these recordings and as the movie goes on it's becoming kind of clear that, oh, it looks like she's maybe getting sicker in these recordings and that she's probably at some point died in the course of his trip. So him going to kill himself, because it does feel like a weird decision at the start. You're thinking, if there's any chance he could get back to his family, why would he want to do this? Yeah. Uh, but then when you find out his daughter's already dead as the movie goes on... Yeah, it makes sense. You're like, mm-hmm. okay, okay, I, I get it. Um, I didn't think it was weird that his wife was never in any of the messages. I'm like... I did think that too, yeah. Like... Cause the I only, guess he just didn't keep them. <laughs> the only thing we have of his wife in this entire movie is right at the start, her saying, no, you go and make all this money to save her daughter. Which, don't get me wrong, the saving the daughter part makes a lot of sense, and I understand why she's pushing for it. But that's all she says, so it really comes across as she just wants rid of him. Like, you go away so I can live my... Two years? My lifestyle. Yeah, that sounds like enough time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's a gold digger. She is a gold digger. <laughs> <laughs> go make that money. 
Um, I gotta pay the pool boy. <laughs> What's the pool boy doing? Oh, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean the daughter's in hospital. The husband's away in long, long flight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the house is empty. Yeah, she's she's loving it up. What a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also thought it was weird that there weren't any from the wife. Not even like messages that we could see her picture on, even if he didn't play them. You know, like we still saw that she had sent them at least. Or even just like hearing her, or, like seeing her walk in the background of one of the daughter's ones. <laughs> even mm-hmm. you know, just did. But it's like she doesn't exist. It's just the door. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree. But whatever. Uh, so, okay. So that, that's your motivator. And that, that's when I really started thinking of Last of Us. It was like, okay, so we've got a main character whose daughter has died. He's lost the will to live. Um, and then the reason why I compare it to Gravity is because, like, unlike Last of Us, which is like a, a time jump, and it's like, okay, Joel's become this, like, like almost bad person who t- to survive and he's lost like his humanity almost because he, he lost his daughter uh this is a bit more like gravity because in gravity if you remember and we've not done it on the show yet but we will at some point uh sandra bullet's character we find out throughout the course of the film has lost a child in the past and she's kind of detached and doesn't really care about surviving and the real arc of that movie is that she she wants to survive again by the end she wants to get back down to earth you know she's literally up in orbit because she wants to escape and like avoid everything because everything mm-hmm. remains of her of her child or whatever um so i was getting a little bit of this that here as well it's, it's kind of like last of us meets gravity set in a jurassic park location <laughs> that, that's what the with movie the, is with the tablespoon of asylum i'm still not agreeing with that but <laughs> yeah, if you want to do you want to throw that into your uh analysis by all means you you, yeah. you have it my my analysis smoothie <laughs> and a little chia seeds i just i feel like th- there's two things that would have made me happier with this movie right or two things that would have made it better one one subjectively one objectively is either the drama is better written and the characters are more have more personality and are more layered and along with that it's, be- it's better directed so the actual dinosaur scenes are exciting and thrilling and we can really enjoy those as set pieces because i wouldn't say i enjoyed any of the set pieces in this movie really alternatively it should be sillier it should be cheesier and lead into nonsense and i think i could have enjoyed that as a silly b movie the problem is is that it's like in this really dull middle place where it's not doing anything good enough to be good on the on the genuine like quality side and it's not doing anything like dumb or fun enough to just be fun on the silly side either so because uh, you know in the theory there's nothing wrong with these ideas like everything i just said about this character bonding with this little girl that you can't even talk to uh and it makes them want to live again like you know that all makes sense me think of the good dinosaur also i've not seen the good dinosaur i can't i can't compare it by all means yeah so in the, the good dinosaur the asteroid just completely misses earth and so dinosaurs continue to live on earth and get a little bit smarter and then all of a sudden there are little human like things wandering around and the dinosaur finds one of them and it it becomes like a boy and his dog not like the movie a boy and his dog but like the story of I was a gonna boy say, and that's his dog a dark ass pixar except, movie <laughs> except the dog is a little human kid who you know they can't talk to each other like he's the dinosaur is always talking in english to the little human child but the human child is always just rah, rah, rah. <laughs> it's not saying anything it's like uh it's like JLA the Nail, which is a Justice League story where uh because the the Kents had a had a nail in their tire and they weren't driving down the road where when Clark landed, they never raised them, so Superman, as we know it, didn't exist. So it's a whole just like one little thing changed the entire course of history. Admittedly, an asteroid missing the planet's a little bit bigger than just a flat tire, but still. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a good scene because you see the asteroid like coming towards Earth and it's very ominous and all the dinosaurs mm. look up. And then it goes, just flies over, <laughs> and then dinosaurs go back to eating. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty. All right, well, back to Munchin. Yeah, uh, it was. A, I actually think it's a pretty underrated movie. It's not like one of their best, obviously, because most people don't seem to like it that much. Mm. But I actually, it is a really emotional movie. It works. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so what's yeah? So yeah, he he's exploring. He he, he hears in the comms or the computer system that. Uh, 
You know, it's very convenient just how functional the computer system still is, given how damaged everything else is, but it's still just telling them things constantly. It's a bit movie convenient, but you know, we'll, we'll roll with it. Um, but yeah, there's a pod that's still surviving, uh, so he goes out and finds it, finds the girl, uh, brings her back. Um, it's almost like they could have done some interesting world building here, because he mentions on his log that she's from, like, the upper class and speaks a different language, so he, he can't understand her. And I'm like, you know, see if you actually sort of, like, revealed more about the world you came from, that could be quite interesting in, like, mm -hmm. maybe saying something about who these people are and maybe the story could be interesting from, like, a class, like, analysis as well of, like, this, this like, you know, this poor pilot who's paid to just do the, the, the traveling saving this this so girl his, yeah. so his daughter can get life-saving medical care yeah yeah like, but there could be some commentary there if they wanted to go into it but it never comes up again it's, it's like never even like addressed again i don't because think because ghost dinosaurs because ghost dinosaurs yes <laughs> um and for the most part like it's like you know they, they do the classic thing where she'll make him laugh a couple obviously at first she doesn't like him she's scared of him um he kind of lies to her because there's like a part of the ship that's got like a evacuation pod that they can launch into space to like go and like meet up with like a, a rescue ship, right? So when he finds the girl, he sends another message saying, oh, actually, there's a survivor, send rescue, blah, blah, blah. But they have to get to the, the launch pod thing and it's up this mountain and he tries to sort of just draw it <laughs> to like say, hey, we have to travel here. But he kind of implies by drawing some stick figures that her family, her parents are are there that she'll be able to get back to her parents. Uh, so she spends the movie thinking that. Um, and honestly, like, this is the sad part of this, is that on paper, I'm like, a movie like this, where the two characters literally speak different languages, and it's like this almost, like, not silent, but like, they Darmok almost... and Jalad at Tanagra. Yeah, we could, I almost think, like, a, a, a movie in that style, where they can't communicate, could actually be, like, a really cool intimate little film like it could like i want to see the art house version of this movie is what i'm trying to say yeah totally i think it could work uh i think in this like i mean honestly the girl actor's fine like i think adam driver is obviously a fine actor but i don't think he has a lot to work with here because the character I, is quite i thin. think he needs a different director for sure if it had a better director it would have been a decent movie yeah I, I think if you get i think a better script as well would have like because if if the good dinosaur can do this plot and it's really emotional, like come on, you can't do it with Adam Driver. <laughs> yeah, like because obviously they really want you to care about them. You know, in, in the last act, because I, I was actually sitting thinking, because uh, when they do get to the ship right at, at the start of the third act, I was like, okay, so they've had some encounters with some small dinosaurs. They have the one scene in the cave where, like, oh, there's, like, a T-Rex-style dinosaur, like, just outside the cave, and they make some guy... So we spend, like, 15 minutes of the movie in a dark cave, which was really dull and boring. Just, I want to put that out there. Uh, but they get to the, the, this, like, ship that's got the launch pad, like, or the part of the ship that's got the launch thing on it, right? And we have the emotional bit where she kind of realizes that her parents are dead and she's pissed about it. But they're going to launch, right? And he's setting up, and I was thinking, well... Is there any obstacles left? Like, it feels like there has to be a big third act thing, but we've not really established anything. And in a weird way, I'm almost... I'm almost complaining that there's not, like, a central dinosaur that's been chasing them, even though that's very unrealistic, as we've pointed out. But it just kind of felt like, what's the, what's the final hurdle going to be? There has to be a final hurdle, but nothing feels like it's been set up. So when these two big carnivore dinosaurs start attacking them and, like, try to kill them, I just kind of feel like this feels like so out of nowhere. It doesn't feel like you've actually built any of this. Yeah, well, it's not the two big carnivore dinosaurs. It's the third one, right, that's missing the eye that comes back because Adam Driver stabbed it in the eye or shot it in the eye or something. That was established early on. That was the cave dinosaur. Like the one when they were in the cave and came, you see the head, big head through the rain. There was a th it. I didn't realize there was a third dinosaur in this last That was a third section. dinosaur, yeah. There was two T-Rexes attacking them. Oh, so they were T-Rexes. Yeah, and then the big one comes out with big, beefy arms. You're like, oh, that's not a T-Rex. And then you but see I, the But I thought he was the one that wanted revenge. Well, I guess he does. He the one. But I, I thought he wanted revenge. that's the one that's missing the eye. I thought he wanted revenge for, like, the death of the other dinosaur, though. I didn't realize there was three. I thought there was only two. No, they killed two 
T-Rex is, and then a big, a third one comes out. Okay, look, the fact that I'm this confused about how many dinosaurs there were in this last scene <laughs> maybe shows that the movie may, should have maybe not have like been as dark and as like edited as like choppily. Just a thought. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I, I followed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tara's so smart. Everyone, she followed. <laughs> I, I legitimately thought there was two, and I thought there were T Rexes. At first, with with a slightly more kind of harsh like head design than Jurassic Park, they had more mm-hmm. kind of like hard like sort of lines on their faces, um, and they basically start like you know rocking the the pod because uh, it's the wrong way up at one point, and I was and I was like, okay, one of the T Rex is going to flip it, and that's how they're going to launch, and that's how they get yeah. away. So thank you, T Rex. Yeah, that was like, helpful. Oh, thank you. It'd be like the T Rex at the end of Jurassic Park <laughs> eating the raptor. Uh, helped us out. But there's a lot of, like, Adam Driver jumping around with his laser gun uh, that sometimes conveniently can't fire, but then can fire. Uh, I guess it's charging or something, uh, you know. <laughs> I guess, yeah. You have to put a passcode in it or something. Yeah. The, uh, I, I, what, the thing I thought was weird that didn't seem to come back is that for there's a moment where the girl, she's on her own, and she gets this, like, giant dinosaur tooth and covers it in berries and stuff and i don't remember that coming back into play oh no she, she does she stabs the dinosaur at the end in the eye with the, the oh other, that's the, the other thing eye. that she used to yeah. stab okay. I, actually i was gonna i was getting ready to complain about that so they establish early on she picks up some berries and adam driver smartly takes one and puts it in his little gadget right and the gadget lights up in, you know, in red or whatever and he's like hey don't eat that so basically he's tested to see is it edible should, should we be able to eat this and he's like, hey, don't eat this. You know, it's bad for you. It'll, you know, we'll do whatever. So when she's on her own, they get separated after the cave bit for a little while. And it's, you know, that's meant to be the scary part because she's on her own. Like, if she gets attacked, she's screwed. And then there's these pterodactyl style dinos that start coming after her, uh, as well as the, the sort of dog sized ones. But she. she Velociraptors? Those weren't Velociraptors, were they? Yeah. No, they were. That was different from the one you were talking about earlier, though. The one that first attacks Adam Driver? The one that he kills that I was talking about not seeing properly is not that the same. Velociraptor for sure. Okay, but that that means these ones aren't Velociraptors that are chasing her here. Maybe maybe they were smaller and I missed it or something. But well, the, I, I thought they were the same dinosaur. No, because these ones had different uh, arm types. These, these were more. These were these were more like uh, they walked more like lizards with their legs. Maybe they were. Maybe they were supposed to be like compies or something. But compies are pretty small. No, because well, at least from Jurassic Park, those are still kind of the same shape as Velociraptors. They're just smaller. These these dinosaurs that were chasing her when she was on her own were walking like lizards, like the sort of the low flat legs. Oh 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 okay 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 yeah right yeah they look like I guess they're like the big cats or something of the <laughs> of the dinosaurs because they do they walk on all fours in there yeah yeah they've got like weird shaped bodies yeah yeah and they can climb trees and stuff too yeah so definitely not velociraptors at this point okay. yeah yeah okay you're right yeah all right. But anyway, the, the thing I was getting to was the, the spear. So she gets like a big yeah, dinosaur tooth or whatever it is, and she takes her berries that she's picked up because she was told that they're not edible, they're bad for her, and she crushes them in a leaf and then like wipes this, the, the tooth in it. And obviously what she's thinking, she's making like a poison tip, right? To stab a, stab a thing. But I was sitting going, okay, I'll get, I'll, I'm not going to be mad at her because she's like a child. She's an idiot, yeah. right? But <laughs> just because something is like bad for you to eat, doesn't mean that it acts like poison if you stab someone with it. You know, like, even there's a difference between venom and poison because one has to be, you know, put in the bloodstream. Dinosaurs are completely different species, so they might not be poisonous to them. That's also true, yeah. It may not even affect the but dinosaur. They're also yeah. from the, the same planet that these things go so grow on, so they maybe they can eat them and they're fine. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, even if they are technically still bad for them, they're, you know, they may be a bit, if they're a bigger dinosaur, which the one she stabs at the end definitely is. But that's the thing, at the end when she stabs it, there's nothing about it that's like, oh, the poison's working. It's just, no, she stabbed it in the eyes. It hurt. <laughs> of course it hurt. Yeah. Um, so, but all I could think was, that, but let's just say we're going to stab a human with this. Even if it's bad for a human, for, for eating, right? Because it'll, it's bad for you that way. Doesn't mean that if you stab them, I mean, yeah, the stab itself will, like, be a stab, but... I guess I don't really know how poisons work. Like, maybe it is just, like, if it gets inside the bloodstream. Because some of them you would have to, you know, like, breathe in, have to go into your lungs, so stabbing you with it wouldn't do anything. Well, I think some poisons can be still, like, 
worse for you if it's a, in a gas form because it still gets into your body and your bloodstream and all that. Okay, but if anything, this conversation is pointing out that there's lots of variables, right? Not everything that's bad for you is bad for you in just one way. Or some of them are bad for you in multiple ways. But just because you can't eat something doesn't mean that just uh, making contact with your skin is going to cause a problem. No? Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, my my gut instinct is is to say if it's poisonous, it's probably bad to for it to be inside you in any way. I mean, maybe? I don't know. But it just, I don't know. It, it, it didn't track with me. Uh, mm. this, you know, it's... it's uh... Because, like, if a snake bites you or a spider that's poisonous, it's probably more deadly to ingest the actual poison than it would be to get poked with it, but it still gets in you. I don't know. Yeah, but there's a difference between... like, Yeah, because the example I'm thinking of is that there's snakes that are they have venom, so if they bite you, they're poisoning you, but you can eat the snake if you... If you... But not the venom. Like, the, there's a venom sack you have to remove. You can eat, like, the flesh of the snake. Yeah, but there's there's other creatures, though, that you can't eat any of, though, because the whole thing's... Like, poisonous. Poisonous to you, yeah. Um, so there's a difference between venomous and poisonous, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Maybe. Look, I don't know. I'm clearly not an expert in this shit, okay? I'm not saying I am. I'm just saying that this logic didn't track with me. That just because you can't eat something doesn't mean that stabbing I, a creature I with it... I was thinking, like, just because it's poisonous to you, it's probably because you're an alien to this world. No, that, that's, that's, that's also true. But size dinosaurs. also matters as well. Like, the idea that, you know, alcohol affects someone who's smaller much more than it affects someone who's bigger. So if you stab a T-Rex with this thing, even if the T-Rex is still technically... Like affected by it it's like such a small part of its overall mass that yeah you know it doesn't work as much you know yeah or like a, if a black widow bites a baby versus an adult person like yeah yeah we have a better chance if you're fully grown yeah for sure um so i'm just saying the, the logic then so and it's not i didn't have a problem with her doing it because i get it she's a kid she's not necessarily that smart right she's trying her best but mm -hmm. in that moment, I was expecting it to come back later in the movie and be effective, and I was getting ready to complain about it. But it never mm -hmm. actually did. She did stab someone with it, but or stab a dinosaur with it, but it was in the eye, so it was like it, it didn't matter that it was it was co cloaked in this you know berry sauce, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't matter. Uh, it was actually the uh, the tar pit or whatever it was that was shooting up the the hot. Yeah, it was like a, it was like an acid pool. Yeah, that that that's what did the dinosaur in. An acid geyser. And that was set up and pay off. You know, they established. You know, Adam Driver almost got hit with this earlier. He saw another one near the end and sort of jumped over it, so the dinosaur would jump over it, and he got blasted with the, uh, yeah, the. It's good timing. The volcanic, yeah, yeah. The timing's a bit perfect, but you know, some movies, so <laughs> you know, whatever. Uh, yeah. I mean, most of the movies, like them traveling through the, the forest or jungle and, uh, you know, there's there's one scene where she sees like a baby dinosaur trapped in uh, like a quicksand or, or whatever. This is the scene you mistook for what I was talking about at the start, <laughs> uh, where she like wants to help it. And Adam Driver doesn't want to, but he, he, he helps it. And I, part of me kind of went, wouldn't it be funny if this dinosaur immediately gets eaten by something bigger? And it wasn't a bigger dinosaur. It ended up in lots of little dinosaurs that came out and killed it. But within seconds, like, this dinosaur they've just saved gets killed by other creatures. Yeah. Yeah, this is the the harshest year in dinosaur history. It is. Nothing can live long enough to procreate. Honestly, this this <laughs> this uh, movie made, made, made me think, yeah, the dinosaurs probably, yeah, like... They're, it's like they didn't want me to sympathize with them that they were all going to die. So it's like, no, no they're all bastards. Dude, you're going to be fine with us. All of them. Yeah. yeah. They're all... It's like the Tashi R rape gang planet, but with dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just dear. gotten so bad and out of control somehow. Like, every dinosaur is, is a carnivore. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I think part of the problem with the relationship between the two main characters as well is that, obviously... The big thing at the end is that he's left her in the pod to leave without him, and he's going to just distract the dinosaur. 
and it's meant to be heartwarming that she actually came out to help him right she risked her life mm-hmm. to save him and it's the idea that she's saving him by making giving him a reason to live again right i get that but the problem is is that adam driver as soon as like he knows that she's alive like he immediately is trying to do the right thing like he doesn't have an arc where at first he's reluctant or anything as soon as he knows there's someone to save he immediately has to do the right thing and be the hero and be like okay i have to get you to the safety thing i have to like escort you up this part like it, it, yeah there's no there's no like reluctance on his part there's no idea where he's like he doesn't want to help her like as, as soon as she exists he has to help her there's no arc in that the sense thing, the thing that bothered me is that he was so willing to sacrifice himself for her on a couple of, of occasions yeah and i kept thinking like well it's still death for her because she does not know how to pilot a starship thing uh, off the oh yeah planet. yeah <laughs> yeah and she'll never she's still gonna, and she'll never make she's it still like gonna get eaten yeah so, so, so she'll last maybe like a mile before something chomps on her <laughs> like yeah. you know it's... so like it, that's I don't, I don't know why he's like I, i'll save you by sacrificing myself but no if you die she's dead i think at the end when she's in the ship though he's already like put in the autopilot or whatever so I, i'll buy it at that moment like it would have been fine yeah but maybe i mean I, they still have to like pile it out of there right like i don't know because it, it doesn't launch until they get inside again well yeah but it, it doesn't launch at first because it's like it's the wrong way up once the dinosaur flips it i'm assuming it's just a case of press start and it'll just <laughs> Whoosh. press the resume button <laughs> resume yes <laughs> and it'll just launch in because like, he's already put the thing he's already put in the coordinates but he, he's supposed to meet up with the uh the rescue ship right there's going to meet yeah, in space the rescue ship's on the way. yeah so those are already Which is in awfully close even though they took a long time to get there yeah do they have supplies on this little shuttle to like last for a while i don't know yeah i don't know um the the, the thing i also thought in the theater was well that was a mistake is when they get to the ship and it power's on, I was like, oh, translator's going to start working. And now he has to tell her that her parents aren't there or she's going to have realize it. Ah, and she'll have to have this conversation with him where they're going to understand each other. And that'll be the first time they speak is that Properly, he's caught in a yeah. lie. You know, and and they they didn't do it. And I thought, well, that was a missed opportunity yeah, <laughs> it seemed it, obvious it, like oh it's gonna work again they're gonna have a translator again you know i never thought of that but you're right they really could have done something there where they finally get to have a conversation like i think i do, I do appreciate they wanted to do the like her realizing without them still being able to communicate but i yeah you're right they should have had like the first real conversation at that point and maybe see how it goes they, uh, they played the language barrier for mostly comedy where you know he says shit when he gets something sticky in his hand and then she starts referring to everything as shit i thought that was cute actually <laughs> no it's fine like i'm not complaining about it it's that, that was a cute like oh man i accidentally taught her a curse word <laughs> it, i think the uh like everything with her like looking at the videos of his daughter and then like playing them later on uh like she's she, there's a big moment towards the end where she plays one and it is a bit convenient that it's the one of the last ones she sent where the, the the daughter finally learned how to do that whistling thing that he was trying to teach her at the start of the movie so it had this kind of like full circle quality to it you know from a strip <laughs> perspective uh but like it, I, I think like instead of like being intense and, fe- and like feeling bad for the character i i, I kind of just feel like a lot of the daughter stuff was kind of sappy and I think that's just down to just down to writing more than anything. It's just down to how it chooses to present it, how kind of simplistic it all is. Because like I say, there is mm-hmm. definitely an arc because he's kind of lost the will to live. Um, but arguably, like, maybe this is a bit, this is still technically cliche, but maybe, like, he goes to the start of the movie, he puts the gun up to his head, he's going to kill himself. What if what stopped him wasn't just him deciding not to do it, which kind of, like, negates the fact that he's about to have this arc, what if what stopped him was hearing a beep that the computer was like, hey, there's a there's a person that's alive, right? And it's like, okay, he has to go save the person. He can't just like kill himself and abandon someone else. That that would be maybe a bit more that that would mean that he was still suicidal. He just was willing to save the other person first. And then that would mean more at the end when he's like willing to live. Like he wants to go and be with her. She's a father now, her parents yeah. are dead. You know, step up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, teach us some more words or something. Uh, 
So it's kind of weird to me that he already made the choice not to do it. And it's like, because it, in the moment, I, I was kind of thinking, oh, he's just doing this because it's like, well, I can't survive here. You know, this is miserable. Um, although the rest of the movie makes it feel like, other than the fact that the other part of the ship is like hard to get to, it does kind of feel like getting rescued is actually not that hard comparatively speaking i feel like other movies well, except that they've got a ticking time bomb now yeah but they don't know that like what, what i'm saying is from his perspective the technology that he has and like you know calling in a rescue ship seems like a fairly procedure thing for him to do it feels like that's just like you know like this is something that can happen and there's a there's a protocol for it um mm-hmm. like it never feels like it's tough to get the message out in fact you know when he sends that first message where he says oh don't bother coming and then he has to like send another one. I thought, oh, maybe he won't be able to, and he's he's going to be like, shit, I've put us in this this tr- this danger now because no one's coming to save us because I sent that message, and now I have to try and save and help this girl. But he just kind of walks out and says, right, I sent another message. They're coming. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's that it's that easy. You can just call them whenever you want. <laughs> just you know, there's just a lot of little things like that that just made it feel like things like they're dire. But there's just a lot of little things where. He was willing to kill himself, uh, and he chose not to, even though he'd already said... I don't know, th- a lot of it just felt like there was too many, like, contradictory little points that just didn't quite click with each other. Um, mm. you know, like, if he was really suicidal, then he should have just done it, and he should have been interrupted, and that's why he didn't do it. But he chose not to do it. So, yeah. what was... It- and he didn't send a new message until he saw the girl. Yeah, You're so right. what was his plan? Uh, and and that immediate aftermath, if he had one. Maybe he still wanted to die, but he didn't want to do it himself. He's, he's going to try to survive at least. I don't know. He's going to find, he wanted to die, but like. What do you find the biggest dinosaur and just jump into its mouth? Like. Yeah, I guess so. This is for you, my daughter, who was on Big Little Lies. <laughs> she was. Yeah, his daughter was on Big Little Lies. Yeah. Season two. Uh, both seasons, I think. Oh, okay. I don't remember. I want to, I want to say she was, uh... Zoe Kravitz, his daughter. Yeah, okay. I think that would be the only one that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but, I... Yeah, that's just... That's just yeah. I think, ultimately, like, the idea for the story is fine. But because it doesn't do anything new with it, and it's kind of just the bare minimum sappy version of it, I never really found myself really engaging with either of the characters or rooting for them or, or or feeling concerned that something bad might happen or or whatever. You know, there was there was a moment I really liked, but then it kind of like got bad. This was in, when they were in the cave, mm. and there's like the really poltergeist looking uh, dinosaur that lives in the cave or whatever. <laughs> um, because you see it in the background, like, moving around when they first fall into the cave, and then it decides to wait before it attacks. Uh, and mm. Adam Driver's, like, alone at this point, and he's got a little thing that will, like, show him what's around in his area. And he's looking out one way, and then the dinosaur, you can see on the little 3D model, is actually behind him, and it just kind of appears. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of sp- spooky. Like, that was good. But then when he fights the dinosaur, we only see it through the perspective of this thing, of this technology thing. And I thought, well, this is not good anymore. <laughs> so it's kind of lame. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's fair. They, and I feel like they thought they had a great big moment when the, the, the sort of the big dinosaur head, you don't see it and then the lightning strikes and then you can see it's behind them in the cave. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that was in the first trailer. Yeah. Like... Like I felt, yeah, I felt like oh, we're, we've got something here, but I, I don't know. Uh, I, yeah, the set pieces just aren't because even Lost World, which I think is a pretty dull movie, right? That's my well, it's not my least favorite Jurassic Park movie because Dominion now exists, but <laughs> it, it was my least favorite until Dominion. Um, like I, yeah, I, I, I think it's a relatively dull movie, but even in that, the set pieces, you know, the T Rex is attacking the the the, the trailer. Don't go into the long grass, right? Yeah, there's there's some really good dinosaurs. Yeah, there. there's still this, the the dinosaur spectacle scenes still are relatively effective. They're much more effective than anything than this. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, because you got Steven Spielberg behind it. Uh, yeah, I get. It. It's almost like it's. Not ashamed, yeah, maybe ashamed of being a dinosaur movie. I don't know, it's weird. It's, it's like it's shying away from it, even though you picked this premise. This is the premise of your movie. Why are you 
so like hesitant of like really focusing on the dinosaurs it's kind of weird it almost seems like a budget thing like we spent all the money on like the the set pieces and <laughs> and adam driver <laughs> Um, and the special effects that we didn't want to, we didn't want to spend too much money on the actual dinosaurs. Well, they're also special effects to be fair. It's not like they're actually ha- like wrangling. But like the special effects yeah. of like the spaceship and stuff they, like that. It's not, it's not like they called the dinos- dinosaur wrangler. Hey, bring some dinosaurs down to set in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know they're, I know what you mean. They're all CGI, but like, it, it's like they, they focused on the easy CGI. Yeah. Not the, the moving animals. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the effects, like, I can't, I always find it harder to judge the effects when I'm seeing something in the theatre. Something about the big screen makes them look not as bad when they're bad to me. I, like, see, when I see, when I see a movie at home, all of a sudden bad CG sticks out to me like a sore thumb. But for some reason in, in a movie theatre, I don't know if it's the way their screen's calibrated or if it's just how big it is, but for some reason it doesn't stick out to me. So I didn't notice any, like, overtly bad CG, but... No, I, I didn't either. I just thought they they tried to do the Godzilla thing where they're hiding the dinosaurs a lot, um, like throughout the whole film. And I thought that was just not a choice. Like, is it just a cost saving thing? Yeah, I think the comparison with that though, that I think points out something that's wrong with this is that in Godzilla, Godzilla is the central thing we're excited to see, and they keep teasing more and more. They're building up to it, and you're waiting for Godzilla. You know, it's it's a build up, and then yes. uh, you know a. Uh, a splish, you know? <laughs> this is like, a release. Yes. yes. <laughs> right? Whereas with this, it, there's no specific dinosaur you're building up to. So when the two T-Rexes show up at the end, it's just kind of like, oh, there's suddenly T-Rexes. There's no, like, here, there's, there's, not, there's no structure to what dinosaurs are where or, or that matter more or, or anything like that. Um, to the point where I didn't even realize there was one that he injured earlier that showed up. Like, they didn't even click to me because they didn't establish it enough properly, I don't think. Mm. Um yeah yeah it's kind of weird uh uh especially since you know when the dinosaur does show up at the cave uh and he stabs it like i i legitimately just thought it was a t-rex because all you could really see was the head yeah well no i i thought it was too um i don't know if he stabs it i think he just shoots it but, but it we the see eye. the eye go yeah. out like he shoots it in the eye and um and when the t-rexes show up I was I was looking at their eyes because it showed their faces and you could see their eyes and they're like okay it's not that dinosaur and then when it shows up the big one shows up and it does specifically zoom in on the eye and you see that it's gone. Um, also to establish that when the girl when Kula stabs in the eye now it's blind. Yeah, that was good. It might not be dead, but it's blind. Well, it's dead pretty quick after that because it gets hit with a second dose of the acid. Uh blast and then it's like it lands and it's like melted flesh and it's like okay where, where was the yeah I thought give me the m- special effects of the dinosaurs were fine i just thought it was weird that they didn't show them very much yeah but g- give me more of this give me more dinosaurs melted by acid <laughs> like this is yeah that was it was a cool look. This, this is the shit that i'm more into uh so obviously <laughs> the end of the movie is them taking off their little ship just as the asteroids uh hitting the earth uh their end of the movie. Good riddance, murder dinosaurs. There's a there's a, like a little uh, montage of like just like a shot of like a a field afterwards during the 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 credits at the end that transitions a little bit every so often. So it's like the Ice Age, then it just looks like a field, and then there's like a modern city like in the distance, and it's like ah, mm-hmm. we've caught up to present day. We do, we just travelled sixty five million years in time. Very good, yeah. very good. <laughs> Um, which begs the question. I still, want, I still want to think it's the now that the asteroid has wiped out the planet. The, these aliens are like, hey, that planet it doesn't have those murdered beasts on it anymore. Let's go, let's go move out out there. Yeah, maybe, maybe it was, maybe it is, maybe it applied something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I, I never got that myself. Why else do they look just like humans? Yeah. So there's, there's co-directors on this uh, who also wrote the movie Scott Beck and Brian Woods. Uh, Scott Beck uh, is known for writing A Quiet Place. Uh, oh yeah, I think I remember that from the trailer. Also Haunt, which I saw, and the upcoming The Boogeyman, which I, I got a trailer for when I saw Scream 6 the other day. <laughs> so, uh, Does it look bad? It didn't look that good to me, no. Uh, Haunt was only... Well, Quiet Place was... Is it not about John thing. Wick? No, it's not about John Wick, I'm, I'm afraid. Because he's got a movie coming uh, And then Brian Woods looks like he co-wrote all the same things. 
Yeah, I, I, have they directed much before this? Let me see. Uh, they did direct Hunt, which I did see. Other than that, it's a lot of shorts and not a lot of other things. Well, given the, the section that I just cut out, uh, we definitely are done talking about 65 and have nothing left to say. So Tara, would you like to rate 65? I feel like giving it a 6.5 just because of the title, but it's not good I'm going to give it a 5. Yeah. I think that's relatively fair. I I think I'm tempted to just dip slightly under that just because it's just it's dull enough that I just I think honestly like I think this audience score is a bit higher because you know there's still things about it to like and you know I I'm still going to go with the 5 though right in the middle. It's definitely a Sony movie though. If it, you know like it's, it's right in that that range. Mm. I don't know that I can particularly say it's a Sony movie, but it does feel like a video game, so maybe. Mm. It was about I Hollow. Would want, I would want to play this video game, though. I, I think that's why I feel like when I see Sony movies, though, they're mostly hollow. And um, I, I will say at least this, this doesn't feel like the character's trying to be cool, which I, I also associate with Sony. So at least that's not there. That's true. But uh, I can see that. Yeah, I, I will go with 4.5. Yeah, it seems a little harsh. It's half a point <laughs> off your score. <laughs> it's like you gave it a five and I went with a two. <laughs> it's, just, it's just kind of forgettable. It's, it's doing a lot of things that you've already seen done better elsewhere. It needs better direction. It needs a better script. It needs more interesting characters. It just, you know, it, all these things like just could be better. Yep. Hey, at least it was short. It was 90 minutes, which honestly was kind of a sign that, okay, they, they've gutted this a little bit because they knew people wouldn't like it, so they're just trying to make it as short as possible. <laughs> which, you know, fair enough. But it was a sign. Go watch The Good Dinosaur, everyone. Yeah. It's a good movie. So we said uh, last time the next episode was 1984. We had to push that, but that means that, again, I'm telling you that the next episode is going to be 1984. So mm -hmm. look forward to that. Uh, back to you. watching. Back to 80s season. Obviously, this was a little diversion from 80s season, uh, but we're back on the 80s movies uh, starting next episode. So uh, look out for that. Uh, I will take this time to thank our Patreon producers. Thank you very much to Tyler Hess and the Palacios, David Short, Bordner, Christopher Moy, David Brown, and Al Treisman. Um, we appreciate all of our patrons, of course, but uh, that is our producers. And of course, uh, you can get bonus content over at patreon.com slash TV. Uh, there's a bonus episode every month at the $3 tier. At the $5 tier, you also get access to uh, the Ace Meltdown, where we just talk about all the different movies we've been watching, uh, and we give each other a sci-fi movie quiz. So, so if, fun. If that's of interest, uh, have a look. Plus, there's bonuses for other shows and all that good stuff. Uh, you can support us for free by simply liking, subscribing, and dinging the bell for notifications. Uh, commenting down below, telling us what you think of the movies we're talking about. All of that does help. Please, please. Uh, but yeah. Uh, that's that's about it though. That's the that's the show, uh, for the week. You're welcome. Do you know, it's for this gift. It's sad that uh, a few days ago I recorded uh, an episode of Collector's Cut with David, which was the Super Mario Brothers 1993 movie, and it's honestly the more exciting dinosaur movie. <laughs> that is a good movie though. Although, I, I do think maybe we should do Theodore Rex for bonus. I think that's on the cards. I think it's a fair, <laughs> that's a fair movie to do at some point. I want to do a dinosaur movie. Don't give them all to David. For sure, for sure. Uh, that's just because it fit into video game season. We, we can do uh, the dinosaur movies all day. Hell yeah. <laughs> We've done Tammy and the T-Rex. It's only right that we do Theodore Rex at some point. I agree. <laughs> if we can find it. <laughs> okay, it'll, it'll be out there somewhere. It's fine. Anyway, that is the show. Thank you very much for joining us. We always appreciate it. Keep watching science fiction and computer at Salsa. Mm -hmm.